education that may not necessarily have been courses taken at North Reading High School. So it defines those and also how they might or might not be factored into calculation. And then the last one is uh, that I have is um, on school functions. This has um, some minor changes to it. And again, with the policy subcommittee suggested that dances have a uh, kind of a separate headline to them. Uh, there are a couple of typos in this one, by the way. Um, parentheses around the letters that are enumerating the, the different provisions of the policy and also in, in item D under the first part, the word it should read, this policy includes products, not, not producers. Also, it's uh, yeah. all student organizations yeah. that need to fund functions. Where right is fund it? Fund yeah. Yeah. Right under school functions. Oh, fund, yes, yeah, thank you. Can I just take a check on that? Uh, the committee should have uh, the correct one uh, in, yeah. in yeah. front of you. And Mrs. Davis, there's, uh, is that an extra copy there? Yes. The press has a copy. Could you give that? That should be run Nicole, function, right? Nicole, I think. Yes. Run Nicole, I think it should be run, not fun. Yeah. Yes. Run yes. function. Oh, run. So run. to run function? Yes. Oh, all right. And then down here, item, under item B, it should be products, not producers. Um, and then this is the one that also has in an item Oh, I like M. a bit of the first one. Yeah. <laughs> Item M is a uh, provision that should um, I re desire to have an alcohol screening test available at a school function. This provision would allow for that to take place. So aside from, these are the substantive, I think, changes that I warrant your consideration. The others are very minor, things like the adjusting the bell schedule to reflect the 7.30 start time again and some very minor grammatical changes, nothing of any language change or anything like that, I can assure you. Let's see the what order do you want to do? In order. Let's start with the um, extracurricular activities. Anyone have any questions, Dr. Charles? I have, I have one question. For the violations, we're, we're, we're meeting out penalties based on weeks. So say there's an extracurricular activity, there may be one act, extracurricular activity that meets four times in a two week period, and there may be another that meets once a month. I have a concern with the, the fairness of the policy in that one kid misses four things and another kid only misses, or that might not miss, misses one meeting and that, or one, one activity and, and that's it. And I don't know if you can get as granular with this as you do with the um, athletic one, but I just have, have a concern with that. It, it, it is a very real concern. It's, it's, it's appropriate, I think, for you to ask that. It, it, similarly, we have students that don't belong to just one activity, and they would pay a greater penalty than the student. Pay. So that's why I, I, I needed it out in yeah. weeks, but um, you're right. There is some there is some ambiguity to it. There isn't the athletic one. I mean, if your season is over, and you're a senior, then you don't fall penalty for I, mean, I don't know that there is an exactness that could be created. I think it's I think it's trying to send a good message, as I think we've been trying to do, but this just kind of tightens it up a little bit and extends it for the school year as opposed to a shorter period of time. But the, the numbers, the, to be honest with you, and I, I mentioned this Thursday night when we met as a policy subcommittee, the, the periods of time that I selected were random. I mean, they weren't, I can't say that they weren't given thought to, but you know, at the same time, I believe in that there's something to be said for redemption, too. I mean, we're not looking to preclude someone from ever participating in that. And I would just ask everyone to notice that in the third line, there is the exception that allows the principal to excuse right. a student who might otherwise miss a bunch of the position action. Um, you know, if there is an extraordinary situation, the principal fails. I, yeah, I, I, again, I'm just going to express my disagreement with the, uh, in particular, uh, the sentence, and Steve touched on it, but I'm still not satisfied with it. Well, weekend of holiday activities, this includes the school day Friday the activity. I mean, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I don't necessarily see what the, the reasoning or the rationale is for somebody that's either absent, tardy, or dismissed on a Friday, not being able to participate in an activity that's on Saturday or Sunday. I think I, philosophically, I think I understand what the principal is saying. I just don't know practically 
why that should be in effect. So. You mean like if somebody was uh, absent from work for a Thursday? They would still be allowed to attend something on Friday. Well, they were in well yeah, I'm just looking at the right. practical application of it. Uh, I'm thinking in terms of a student that uh, has a toothache and is, is uh, comes into school late on Friday to go to the dentist. Well, that could be that could be way. Uh, yeah, why 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 is it arbitrary? I mean, why is it subjective? I mean, if a student is dismissed on a on a Friday, if a student is sick on a Friday, is the student necessarily? sick and unable to participate on a Saturday. I think the intent is just to prevent abuse of the policy students saying, woo, three day weekend. You know? but, but I think when you do, <laughs> when you make a policy that's intended to prevent something from happening, there has to be evidence that that something is happening and is a problem. And I don't see that kids are participating in the class play or in a, uh, another activity or a sporting event is going to say, oh, I think I'll take Friday off and call in sick. I mean, people call in sick every day. I mean, it's just, unless there's a basis to believe that they're somehow trying to get a free day off or that they're not sick or that they didn't need to be dismissed or that they didn't have a good reason for being tardy. I, I just, you know, I, I think it's almost, if I thought it was prevented in some way, I would I would reconsider it, but I think it's almost in a sense punitive. And, uh, well, part of the reason it's here is to parallel the athletic policy where the MIA fills in the same requirements. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure I agree with that either. So I'm just, I'm just yeah. expressing my concern. That's all. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. And I agree. That's why I think it's important to have um, you know, the exception where the principal is designated can waive the situation. Yeah, I think I made the point to Mr. Uh, Mr. Davis and Mr. Jordan Thursday night that I do that now. And you that know, if an extenuating circumstance comes up, and they do, right. um, we have a conversation about that. Right. All right. Are there any other questions around that one? Oh, go, 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 one time. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, none. No. Oh, I'm sorry, four to one. <laughs> <laughs> Athletics? But just for that reason. Oh, Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that was just cool. No? Question. We have um, our language as the first paragraph of athletics, which says during the school year, then we have the MIAA, which says during the season of practice or play. So I, I guess we, we have two. Which, which rule are we applying here? Well, we're applying the, the first paragraph, but the first, see the first bold sentence? That right. The following says, exceeds the provisions of that rule. So right. I'm, I'm quoting 62.1. But by keeping 62.1 in here, is that going to be a cause for confusion? some sort of confusion? In, in I, other I words, don't believe so. No? So I saw that you were confused. I didn't think it would be. No, I'm just looking at it saying, wait a minute. I know this says it it, it, it exceeds the provision, but right here this says, so I'm just, okay. That was my only, uh, yeah. Maybe if you could offset the, the MIIA rules somehow, you know, but it just indent them a little bit to show that it's a direct provision. Right, I mean, because it makes it look like the two, I, what I could do is put it. I could. Yeah. I could put in, put in brackets after season mm -hmm. a reference to the yeah. the, the districts. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. You know, in brackets, yes. so it's not okay. The other question yeah. I had is on the. Um, it says. It says, for example, if you have on your first offense, I believe it says 25. Yeah. First violation, 25 percent, and then it says, if the season is one to seven events, that's one one event. So if it's seven, again, if it's if you, if you have seven events during the year and you only miss one, that's not twenty five percent. No, but will they also say that they round down to the next? Yeah, they round, the they round down. It's truncated. It's it's oh, okay, I got you. So the All most right. it would see it's actually like one point okay. seven five, but they round down okay. to the lower. Okay. Right. Any other questions? John, just for clarification, yeah. how do you interpret the, the sentence that was in the other policy as well? But it talks about the prescription medication prescribed for the student chooses to be stored in the nurse's office unless otherwise known by a licensed physician. Consistent with school committee policy. If, in fact, somebody violates that, is that essentially falling into the same sanctions as the, the 
possession and all that, if they have a, if they bring a prescription medication to school, and for some reason it fails to get into the nurse's office, then they would, in fact, be in violation of this policy. Is that, because it, it's not written that way. It says that you're not supposed to do this, but I'm just curious <coughs> how you would interpret that. that. That is how I would interpret okay. that there would be a violation. Okay. Yes. And the only other question I have is, does the NIA require um, Could I make another point on that? I think that I think the district's medication policy has very specific language too about how medication should be identified. Yeah, you know, I so I think that. that comes into play too. So. But I just wanted to see if it was falling into the same category. I, I would say other. yes. Okay. And, and the the other thing I wanted to ask is, does the MIA require the same attendance policies that we're just talking about now in our policy? Do they require that on, 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 on a weekend? On, Cannot go to school or be dismissed or tardy on a Friday. Um, I'm not sure that they do. You know, I'm not sure that they do, and I, I probably should know that, but okay. I don't. Um, no, I wasn't sure myself. I just wanted to see it. I may be able to answer that before I leave. Okay. All right. I don't want to belabor it. I just okay. Do we take motion? On I think the you second? have to be in school for the on the day of the contest. The day off. Not a, not necessarily a practice. That becomes a coach's. Broad. In other words, the MIA doesn't say that you have to practice on the day before, but for the day of the of the actual, let's say it's a game, you yeah, have to be in school. school. Okay. And similarly, they have provisions for grades and eligibility. Okay. Do we have a motion? Move for approval. <coughs> second. Do we have a second?
what we really need to do is go back to first principles. How is student evaluation done? At the elementary level, 